Good afternoon, and welcome to the Cathedral Basilica of St. John the Baptist, and today's celebration of the wedding of Miss Kelly Elizabeth Bradshaw and Mr. Joseph Frederick Savoca. Whether you're here in person or joining us from the comfort of your own home, welcome. This church is a special place, the holy place. It is the church named after the patron saint, St. John the Baptist, who was the minister of grace at his own cousin Jesus' baptism in the River Jordan. But more than a church, this is a cathedral, which means it's the home of the Bishop of Savannah, Bishop Stephen Parks, who is the only individual allowed to sit in that chair. And beyond being a simple cathedral, it is a minor basilica, which means the church designated by Pope Francis in the Vatican as being a special place with historical significance and value. It was granted the title of minor basilica a little over a year ago by Pope Francis soon after he learned of Joe and Kelly's intention to be married. <laughs> I welcome you all, and in normal course, I would suggest that we have a moment of silence to put ourselves in the Lord's presence, but Kelly and Joe have suggested a particular hymn that they would like to share with us, the words of which are in your program, and you're welcome to listen along. You're also welcome to join us in song, whatever you're more comfortable with. O God, who in creating the human race willed that man and wife should be one, join, we pray, in bond of inseparable love these your servants who are to be united in the covenant of marriage, so that you make your life fruitful, they may become by your graced witnesses to charity itself. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. I invite the bridal party as well as you to be seated. Mm -hmm. And I invite Emily and Ashley to come up and share the words of sacred scripture with us.
A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Two are better than one. They get a good wage for their toil. If the one falls, the other will help the fallen one. But woe to the solidary person. If that one should fall, there is no other to help. So also, if two sleep together, they keep each other warm. How can one alone keep warm? Where one alone may be overcome, two can resist. A three-ply cord is not easily broken. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts. I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love. I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It is not jealous, it is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. If there are prophecies, they will be brought to nothing. If tongues, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. For we know partially, and we prophesy partially. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. 
When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. When I became a man, I put childish things aside. At present, we see indistinctly as in a mirror, but then face to face. At present, I know partially, then I shall know fully, as I am fully known. So faith, hope, love remain. These three, but the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh, so they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no human being separate. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Does it seem real? Kelly and Joe, on behalf of all of us who are gathered here, let me state the obvious. We're thrilled you decided to commit your lives to one another. We're honored that you've asked us to be part of the celebration. It is a gift, it's our gift, to share this moment with you. As an ordained minister of the Catholic Church, it's my responsibility to point out to you that you have chosen to make your vows, your promises, in a holy place promises that you'll rely on and depend upon for the rest of your lives. When we look at you, we see your devotion to each other. But more than that, we see great promise in what your future holds. We're inspired by you in our own relationships, our own marriages, and in our own lives. And when you look out into this assembly of your family and friends, I hope you see acknowledgement and acceptance of your decision and our commitment to support you as a couple in your life journey and our intent to advocate for you as a family and a domestic church. We're not a passive audience. We're here to witness your vows and offer our prayers that you receive the grace from God that will allow you to truly live the promises you're about to make in both the best and the worst of times. In preparation for today, you've chosen scripture 
which tells us something about you and gives us a peek into what's in your heart as you prepare to take your vows. The readings share a common theme, one that speaks to the very heart of what a Christian marriage is. They speak to unity, to permanence, to faithfulness, to selflessness, to faith. The readings speak to the point that you are God's gift to each other and ask you to accept that neither of you is perfect. Your devotion to each other is obvious to us. It's observable. We see it, Joe, in the way you look at Kelly. And we see it in Kelly's reflection of that beautiful smile that she gives you back. Our first reading from the Wisdom Book of Ecclesiastes helped us to remember the what, that you'll be stronger as a couple than you are as two separate individuals, that your marriage is blessed by the presence of God, who will make each of you better, more accountable, more humble, more loving, and that your marriage is blessed by his grace, a grace that will strengthen your bond sanctify your union, and protect your family. The readings also acknowledge our expectation that today is a great day, one of the best of your lives. But in hope and faith, they encourage us to believe that tomorrow will be even better. They help us see what is happening to you today as truly incredible and absolutely amazing. But if we're truthful, those of us who have the experience of years and decades of marriage realize and recognize and need to tell you that what you're trying to do is nearly impossible. St. Paul, in his letter to the people of Corinth, refutes the conventional view that marriage is simply a 50-50 proposition and asks you to recognize that there'll be times when you need to carry the whole load that you need to be all in. That Kelly, you need to pick up Joe's share, and Joe, you need to pick up Kelly's. It's a hundred and a hundred. And you'll need to work each day to find each other, to fall in love all over again, and again, and again, and never stop trying, and never quit. Our gospel story seals the deal. It reminds us that marriage is a gift from God that needs to be protected at all costs. My personal hope in our prayer today is that you recognize that you're off to a great start, that today's celebration is filled with abundant significance. You'll need to trust in us, in this group assembled here, to be there when you need us, to advocate for your marriage, even at times when we might want to support you as individuals, we're going to tell you that all that matters is your spouse and your family. We're going to ask you to trust in each other. Trust in the promises that you're going to offer in a few minutes and the commitment you're about to make. And at the end of the day, trust in him. Trust in the grace of the sacrament, God's presence in your lives. Trust that he'll guide you, direct you, and lead you to each other. And if you're ready, I invite you to take your place in the center of the church.
We're just waiting on you. <laughs> Dearly beloved, you have come together in the house of the church so in the presence of the church's minister and this community, your attention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. And through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that you may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of his church, I ask you to state your intention. Kelly and Joseph, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? We, we have. have. Did you hear me? <laughs> Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other as long as you both shall live? We are. We are. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? We, we are. Do. Or are. Do. Are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, I invite you to join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. I, Joseph Frederick Savoca. I, Joseph Frederick Savoca. Take you, Kelly Elizabeth Bradshaw. Take you, Kelly Elizabeth Bradshaw. To be my wife. To be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you all the days of my life to love you and honor you all the days of my life. To love you and honor you all the days of my life. All the days of my life. I, Kelly Elizabeth Bradshaw. I, Kelly Elizabeth Bradshaw. Take you, Joseph Frederick Savoca. Take you, Joseph Frederick Savoca. To be my husband. To be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in, in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you all the days of my life. To love you and to honor you all the days of my life. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. Bless and sanctify your servants in their love, O Lord, and let these rings, a sign of their faithfulness, remind them of their love for one another. Kelly, receive this ring. Kelly, receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Joseph, receive this ring. Joseph, receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, with great pride and joy, I present to you Kelly and Joseph Savoca. You may kiss your husband.
I ask you to please stand. And invite Kelly's brother and Joe's sister to come up and share with us their prayers. Dear brothers and sisters, let us accompany this family with our prayers that the mutual love of this couple may grow each and every day and that God in his kindness will sustain their family and all families throughout the world. After each petition, I invite you to join me responding, Lord, hear our prayer. For Kelly and Joe, and in a special way, for their loving and supportive families. We pray in gratitude for their guidance and continued support of their parents, their siblings, and all of their relatives. Protect them, keep them safe, and grant them eternal reward for their goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Kelly and Joe, and in a special way for their friends, may they continue to stand by this couple encourage them and inspire them. We pray that their vibrant village is one that continues to foster hope, love, and joy, and that by your presence, they are drawn deeper in community towards greater unity with you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the heroes who have served and continue to serve in our armed forces, and in a special way for Kelly and Joe's grandfathers, cousins, and uncles. We pray in gratitude for their courage, sacrifice, and loyalty. Bless them with your grace, protect them, and keep them safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and for those who are unable to be with us today, and in a special way for Kelly's grandmother, Betty Denard, May they find strength and healing through prayer, and may their caregivers find strength and compassion in your grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been called home to you, and today we remember Nana Rose, Grandpa Joe, Nana Terry, Papa Al, Uncle Jimmy, Uncle Donnie, Granddad, and Pop Pop. We pray for all the dearly departed. May they have everlasting peace and joy in the company of the angels and saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Kelly and Joe, may they always see the best in each other be truly present during both the small and the big moments. Tackle challenges united as one team and always be the best of friends. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Kelly and Joe and their domestic church, may it be a home filled with joy and laughter. May they be blessed with good health and may they always find happiness and forgiveness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Kelly and Joe, bless them. Fill them with your wisdom. Grant them humility in their moments of success, compassion in their moments of struggle, strength in their moments of weakness, and hope in what the future might bring. May they love and appreciate each other and always hold fast the vows that they have taken this day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Kelly and Joe, may they recognize your presence in their lives. Seek your guidance and comfort throughout their journey through life, and may they be examples of patience, kindness, warmth, and understanding, which inspires us all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer.
for our families and especially our parents. We pray in gratitude for filling our lives with love, joy, and opportunity. Grant them the gift of good health and happiness for the rest of their days. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, may we continue to shower this couple with love and support. May they see our faces, admiration, appreciation, and affirmation for them as a couple. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you are present in our midst. As Kelly and Joe become this day a new creation, bestow your grace upon this couple, seal their union, accept our prayers and fill us with your spirit. You who live and reign forever and ever, amen. Kelly and Joe, would you join us here at the Kneelers? Heavenly Father, who formed us in your own image, Male and female, you created us so that as husband and wife, united in body and heart, we might fulfill our calling in this world. O God, who to reveal the great design you formed in your love, willed that the love of spouses for each other should foreshadow the covenant you graciously made with your people, so that by fulfillment of the sacramental sign, the mystical marriage of Christ with his church might become manifest in the union of husband and wife among your faithful. Graciously stretch out your right hand over Kelly and Joe, we pray, and pour into their hearts the power of the Holy Spirit. Grant, O Lord, that as they enter upon this sacramental union, they may share with one another the gift of your love, and by being for each other a sign of your presence, become one heart and one mind. May they also sustain, O Lord, by their deeds the home they are forming. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children. Graciously crown with your blessings your daughter Kelly, so that by being a good wife and mother, she may bring warmth to her home with a love that is pure and adorn it with welcoming goodness. Bestow a heavenly blessing also, O Lord, on Joseph, your servant, that he may be worthy, good, and a faithful husband and a provident father. Grant, Holy Father, that desiring to approach your table as a couple joined in marriage in your presence, they may one day have the joy of taking part in your great banquet in heaven. We ask this and we pray for this through the intercession of Christ our Lord. Amen. God the Father wills that his children be of one heart, united in faith, love, and charity. Let us as one Christian family, Catholic and Baptist alike, Call upon him in the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. You may stand.
be remiss if I didn't thank Dr. Warnock for such wonderful music today. And my brothers and sisters, it was great joy and honor that once again present to you Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Savoca. Yep. Yeah.